Hello, everyone. My name is Prabhakaran from the Azure Customer Experience team. And today I'm joined by Tom and Tats from the Azure AKS engineering team to talk more about some of the cool new capabilities added to the extension. Since the last episode and with many interactions with our customers, we were able to capture those valuable feedbacks and translate them into new features within the AKS VS Code extension, such as reconcile cluster, comparing two clusters, aborting the last operation, and capturing granular TCP dump and array as a tool and all new create new cluster. Uh, I now invite Tom and Tads to talk about the new features added to the VS Code extension. Uh, Tom, uh, do you want to introduce yourself and talk about these features? Sure. Yeah, I'm Tom. I'm an engineer on the AKS team. Um, yeah, so our general approach with uh, these features is trying to find ways to make um, common tasks as easy as possible, to remove friction, and to really allow developers to continue with their workflow from within the VS Code environment that they're already familiar with. Um, Create is uh, quite straight straightforward. It allows you to create a cluster very quickly um, using some standard setup. Um, compare, um, again, does what it sounds like. It allows you to compare two different clusters so you can see if you configure one slightly differently. Is there something you might want to make a change to? Um, reconcile and abort, um, hopefully you're familiar to um, AKS uh, users, but the idea is basically um, if you have a cluster that is not in a succeeded state, you can reconcile it so it basically takes the desired state and applies that to the running cluster. Um, abort again is to stop the most recently started operation. Um, so if you realize you've made a mistake, you don't want to do what you just submitted, stop that. Um, TCP dump is a phenomenal tool that people use for troubleshooting network issues. Um, it can be somewhat complex to set up and to run um, yourself. Um, so our idea here is to really provide that interface um, right in within VS Code. And finally, the eraser tool um, Again, does what it sounds like. It allows you to erase um, older images um, from your nodes and keep your system secure and clean as possible. And with that, I will turn it over to Tats to actually show us some demos. Nice. Hi, Prabha. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much. This is absolutely right. And thanks, Tom, for putting it such a nice way. So I'll start in the same order what Tom said. Um, compare AKS cluster. This is one of the user uh, us feature via our repo. And I think the idea is that a lot of time people have two clusters. One is working, one is not working, or sometimes user want to compare two cluster configuration. So for that, sometimes user compare, use JSON object, copy it from the portal, put it in the file, and then compare the two file using third party tool. We are not saying don't use the third party tool, but here, user by just simple click can use this tool to compare two cluster. In this case, I've just compared cluster one and cluster two, which I created for this demo. And here I can see what the provisioning state difference is. It can come handy when the scenario is that why this cl cluster is in succeeded space, whereas another one is in updating. And then user can easily see why with the configuration difference. That is a handy tool. And under the hood, we do all the heavy lifting for the specific feature. Moving forward, another use when there are um, blue green deployments, right? Identical clusters and customers wants to see the configuration drift between these clusters. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Very like cool. depending on the yeah, depending on the experience of the user. I, I mean, as you correctly pointed out, Prabha, uh, people can use it to their expert level. The second, which Tom uh, correctly pointed out, was the new create cluster UX, which is Pretty simple. Here we have upgraded. User can create in a one click without leaving their favorite editor. Uh, and sometimes engineers are in that mode that they are doing some coding and they want to create a new dev test cluster. Now a user can by simply selecting their resource group. Uh, here I selected my demo group and let's name it. Um, well done. Uh, MSFT, and then let's select Central US. And then, boom, it goes. It is handshaking with the ARM call via our SDK, and now it will send a request to create the cluster. Create cluster does take time. So since you guys have seen the uh, UX, I'll move on to the next, which is reconcile and abort operations. This is, again, one of the customer feature which came to us via 
I think Prabha U via our open source repository. So in this case, yeah. let's say, for example, I have a MSFT cluster two, which is in a good state, and I decided to do a managed cluster operation, say rotate cluster certificate, and instantly saying yes to it, instantly. I went to do some another work and realized, oh, no, I don't want to do that operation in my cluster. So I go to my show properties page back again and hit abort. This is abort operation will only show when there is an operation going on which involves the starting of the cluster. And boom, see the request which was getting sent by VS Code via our ARM call, which is an SDK, is canceled because of the abort click. And you can see that operation is now canceled. And this is especially now, helpful with longer running um, activities, such as update or upgrade. Um, if you have a PDB on your cluster and you realize, you know what, this upgrade is not going to finish in a timely manner, I want to make some changes first. Um, you can cancel the upgrade, make your changes, do what you need to do, and then rerun the, uh, that long running operation. Um, so you're not just waiting indefinitely for something that potentially will take quite a while. Awesome. And, and this Indeed. is true for any cluster management operation, right? Yes, yes. And uh, one of the things I came to know is that reconcile was quite was used quite a few times when your cluster was in a bad state, right? right. So uh, having this kind of functionality at the user's doorstep also get advanced user as a noob user to actually explore if they want to reconcile, try reconcile rather than having the whole cycle and waiting for a few days yes. to get exactly. back. I think they can use this tool to do that. So I would recommend reconcile. A recommendation is definitely to use re reconcile to take a cluster that's in a uh, non-successful uh, state versus, say, stopping the cluster and starting the cluster, um, which could create other problems. The reconcile is a, a much safer and uh, less impactful change to make. And now you can see after hitting reconcile, it is doing a board. Uh, updating the cluster. So we leave that at the state and move on to the other one because at some point of time, the reconcile will happen and this cl cluster will again come on the happy state. We can check this out at the end of this demo. Let's move to, um, and we can check this new create cluster as well later on at the end of the demo. Let's move on to the uh, TCP dump, one of the feature we created again from the OSS repo uh, feature request for capturing TCP dump traffic for network diagnosability. Currently, there is a document which explains how to collect TCP dump, which is four to five steps for the user yeah. to uh, gen to create to capture their cap files, download it, and then they can send it. If they understand how to use it, they can debug. Otherwise, they send it to the CSS engineers or the expert support engineers. Here, we have taken the functionality to the doorstep into one click. So essentially, if user has a cluster and bunch of nodes, they will select right click on their cluster and they will select something called collect TCP dumps. In this case, I have my debug pod already installed. Otherwise, user will have something called create button appearing here. In those scenarios, they all they need to do is click on the create and soon after the little bit of a progress, they will see this UX. We have added filters, but for now, I want to run this without filters so that we can show the amount of traffic I have done without filters. For the audience, these are the filters we have added. So let's let's go ahead and start with the default capture. So I'll, I'll click on the start button. So imagine all that five to six steps user need to do is now UX via VS Code extension. And all they need to do is click on the create pod and then sit back and click on the start and count until how far they want to you know, get the traffic for so the last 30 minutes. They can wait for 30, 30 seconds. And um, let's say I want to capture for like 10 seconds and I will stop now. What happens at the background is now all the heavy lifting is done by this VS Code extension to at this point, stop the TCP dump the capturing and then present it. At this point, we can actually download it from the node to your two users local machine. Here, I'm going to select downloads. So just a, just a thought, uh, Tats here, you know, if we can add an upload button where users can upload it to a storage account and then share it with the support team, that really bridges the gap um, of sharing the captures 
with the support team. And the filter looks very cool. Uh, I think that w- this will help uh, customers to capture very granular level of uh, the traffic, avoiding all those noises and you know uh, just capture uh, what is required for that scenario. Indeed. And uh, thank you for the advice. I would highly recommend to go to the open source repo and definitely, which at the end of the, this presentation, I can show it to you. So as you can see, after clicking download, it has downloaded to the, to the location I s- said. And now I'm, all I'm going to do is capture this. Since I know how to read the uh, cat file, I'll go in here. And I'll do TCP dump dash R, paste the file name. And you can see that easy it is. Instead of going through the steps, creating your own deployment, deploying it, it's in about 30 seconds we have TCP dump in your local machine. You can now use other Wireshark kind of tools to provide for the filter, or user can, like you mentioned, Prabha and Tom previously, this these kind of early filters can help in filtering out the people who know or the expert level, depending on the label they are. Or this could this cap file can be shared with the CSS and support engineer. So now that initial experience of capturing that TCP dump is super simple and just in a couple of clicks, user can get it. Now, moving on to the last feature, which is create eraser tool, which is kind of, again, used by some of the uh, customers for actually cleaning up the garbage collection for their uh, nodes, which so eraser tool is well-known tool, which is used for cleaning up the unused images. So all user need to do is right click, select their cluster, right click and select run eraser image cleanup. And all it does is checks the user's properties. If your cluster is in good state, once this is done, might be I'll check, I'll take the other one as well. That is it, eraser. There you go. In this case, uh, it'll reassure, recheck that user really wanted to, um, now the both appear, I'll just take the one. Um, yes, I want to clean up unused images. And off it goes, it deploys the eraser cluster. Again, one click feature, all the heavy lifting done for the user. And um, at this point, use engineer can focus on their developer experience in their tool and so on and so forth. And this all experience is just one click for them and it has successfully run against this cluster. So, so this is yeah. And, yeah. When customer wants to clear up some disk space, you know, due to uh, the way they use the image pull policy, it can, you know, uh, fill up very quick. And sometimes it puts the you know, operating system into a read-only mode. So this will help avoid all those uh, hiccups in the cluster. It's very cool. And just to close the loop, you remember at the start, create cluster, we created that Tom Prabha at mm-hmm. Open at MSFT. It's now created. So I can right click, go to the show property page, and I can see it's in a succeeded state. So the operation we were waiting for, long running operation, it has created as well. So yeah, create cluster is already created. And that's about it. At the end, I would really encourage users to uh, kindly go to our repo. We have a discussion board. Uh, user can add their suggestions here, or they can go to the repo itself, um, which is VS Code AKS tools, and open the feature request via issues. And we keep a very close eye in this repo. Um, just to fill the last gap, if user don't know how to uh, download this extension, they can go to their extension manager and look for AKS. And upon that, they will see Azure Kubernetes services. That's where, since I've already downloaded, it appears as downloaded. It's so a very lightweight extension it. that gets installed instantly, right? And then Indeed. we're going to share those repo, the links to the repo in the description to the video, right, Tats? Yes, absolutely. We will. It's awesome. And the previous videos as well, where we have explained the other features. So these are the latest few few features, and that's uh, that's about it. Thank you, Dads. Thanks for this uh, cool demo, and thanks, uh, Tom, 
for joining us today. And uh, I guess you enjoyed watching this uh, demo and the cool new features that are available through VS Code extensions. I encourage you to go explore, download the extension, share your feedback and your comments. Thank you so much for watching this. <laughs>